Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don Inspector Serial Show. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have a double feature starring Roy Rogers and Gabby Hayes. First up is Jesse James at Bay from 1941. Now in this one, Roy Rogers has a dual role as Jesse James and Clinton Burns. Our second feature is Days of Jesse James. Now in this one, Roy Rogers plays Roy Rogers. Gabby Hayes joins in and Dan Redberry, another great cowboy, plays Jesse James. So here we go with our double feature of Roy Rogers. In return for opening up this virgin territory, the government is granting us land. But we want freight, not land. So to hasten settlement, we propose to turn these fertile acres over to you and other competent farmers. As the government will not grant patents to us until after the land is developed, I cannot give you a deed immediately. However, this option is your guarantee that after you've properly developed the land, you can buy it for a nominal price. Not more than three dollars per acre. I mean, $100 an acre. Well, let's go to Hillman and find out. That's just in case some settlers fail to take up their options. Now that we've accepted title from the government, we can't risk having to pay taxes on any land that's unoccupied. Then this $100 business is just for outsiders. Certainly. Any of you settlers who want to stay, just send your options to my office in St. Louis. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crager. You can't blame us for being worried. First, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Davis here for arranging this meeting for me, a total stranger. I'm a lawyer, but my father was a farmer. When I read about this outrageous swindle in the St. Louis papers, I was furious and came straight here to offer my help. It's mighty nice of you, Mr. Sloan, but we ain't got much money. You don't have to worry about my fees, because except for your goodwill, there won't be any. As it appears that the railroad had no title to the property at the time it issued the options, it is therefore my judgment that these options are valueless and the settlers have no rights in the lands which they develop. Oh. That is my legal opinion. But my private opinion is that the men who perpetrated this are the dad blamed a set of swindlers still unhung. <laughs> within 30 days or get out? That means $16,000, mister. 
We ain't never seen that much money. You better start looking, old lady. While I'm preparing an appeal, I most earnestly plead with you not to resort to violence, as it'll only turn public sentiment against us. An appeal? What good's an appeal gonna do? By Jingo, I'll fight before they run me off my farm. Yes, yes, my yes, yes. What you need is a fighting leader. Who are we gonna get? Unfortunately, being a county official, I can't serve. But there used to be a fella back before you come here who fought the railroad tooth and nail for condemning the best farmland for its danged old right away. Then where is he? Who are you talking about? What if I did say it? I was talking too much. But, Sheriff. Th that's just it. I'm the Sheriff. And if he comes back here, he'd be risking his neck, and it's my job to put a noose around it. But by quacky, I'll do it. Maybe I can get rid of that noose someplace. Got paper? Got a pen? Sure. I'll well, get it out here. Right here, Sheriff. I'll show them fellas a thing or two. By quacky. <laughs> My name's Carson. I'd like to take up the option on the Davis place. Why, why, yes, yes. I'm Crager, Mr. Carson. This transaction you're speaking of will have to be in cash, you know. $16,000. Yes, I know. Uh, I want the deed made out in Davis's name. In Davis's name? Charlie Davis is kin to me, and I just don't want to see him lose his farm, that's all. Seems to be all right, Mr. Collins. Get the papers, and we'll make out the deed. Jesse James. Jesse James? What do you mean, Jesse James? Jesse James just rode into town. He did? Why, yeah. that darn fool. Come on. There he is. That's Jesse James. I arrest him. And don't forget, I claim the $10,000 reward. If there is that much money. Does he mean me? I've heard tell of Jesse James, but why me? My name's Clint Burns. Look here, Jesse. Are you forgetting I'm the sheriff? Coming to town in broad daylight like this? I ain't forgetting nothing. I never saw you before in my life. Well, I've seen you, so don't make me use this. Come along. Well, I'll go along if you say so, but... Would you mind witnessing it, Mr. Crager? Now, if you'll just get this deed recorded, the deal will be completed. All right, I'll do that. Craig, Craig, come here. Look at this. Here, Y74369, and here, Y74369. This is a list of serial numbers furnished to us by the bank from St. Louis. The money that was stolen off the train? Yes. That's where I've seen that man before. That fellow Carson. That was Jesse James. We just got Jesse James. What do you mean, got him? He's locked up over at the jail right now. That's quick work. I want my reward. Oh. Don't look at me like that, Jesse. 
When I wrote to you, I figured you'd have sense enough to keep out of my sight. What do you mean, your sight? You're as blind as a bat. Let me out of here. Where's Jesse James? You want to see him? You bet I want to see him. Where's the rest of the money he stole off my train? Funny, he didn't tell me. Hey, you sure do seem right at home in this jail, Mr. Krager. I want my reward. What do you mean, Jesse James? This isn't Jesse James. Huh? Who ain't Jesse James? I ain't. Jesse James was clean shaven five minutes ago. You ought to know that a man can't grow a four days beard in five minutes, you old goat. And who are you, anyhow? I'm Clint Burns, the best poker player in Missouri. Whoever he is, he isn't the man who just bought the Davis farm. Come on, Sheriff, let's get out of here. Uh, you ain't going no place, not yet. Hey! Oh, shut yeah. up! You've caused enough trouble already. Besides, I think maybe you're a material witness or something. I knew there wasn't that much money in the world. <laughs> Easy, son. The sheriff's with him. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Sheriff. How's things been going? All right. Hmm? Morning, Emmy. What brung you here, Sheriff? I reckon you know, Emmy. Another cup of your buttermilk, of course. You know a man named Carson? Carson? No, I never heard of him. No? Then maybe you haven't got a deed to this place. You're darn tootin' I've got a deed. Oh, you don't. That's mine. Sealed and recorded. And I'm hanging on to it. Now, watch out you don't hang with it. That was bought with stolen money. You know who bought it? Jesse James. Where is he? We don't know nothing about Jesse James. Now, you get moving, Crager, before I lose my temper. It sure was good buttermilk. Sort of takes a bad taste out of a man's mouth. That's the right idea. You got your deed and you got your guns. Keep them both handy when that wolf's around. Bye, Emmy. What are you yelling about? You claim the land was worth $100 an acre, and that's what you got paid for it. Well, you better get busy and capture that bandit, or I'll bring some people in here at will. Yeah? Won't be the first time that's been tried, but they ain't never got Jesse James yet. And if I was you, I'd be watching that bank of yours. He may be holding it up right now. Seems to be quiet. Yeah, I reckon it is. Where are you going? Going to bed. It's very near nine o'clock. Wait a minute. I want to take a look inside and be sure. What's the matter, Craig? Are you getting spooky? Sorry, Sheriff. You have to take that. There's only one other like it in the country. Then you better start looking for that other one. Now, if you two will just sit tight, nobody will get hurt. Speaking of that. What are you going to do? Just stand there? Nope. Gonna go let that fella Clint Burns out. Clint Burns? Oh, yes. Well, good night, Sheriff. I know you can't be in two places at once, doggone it, but I just swore you was Jesse James. I'll give you more than that to swear about if you pull a trick like this on me again. Fine, Sheriff, you are. You ain't even got a gun. Hmm? 
Hello, Burns. Why not? Some nights you'll be just a gambler. And other nights you and your gang will be out making every farmer in this county anxious to collect that reward. You mean I'm to do all this burning and shooting so they'll be out to get the real Jesse? Exactly. So long as the sheriff and the rest of these yokels look upon Jesse James as a plaster saint, I can never stop him. But you're the one man who can change all that. It's a deal. You furnish the cash and I'll furnish the trouble. <laughs> the bank over there. You'd better go talk to him, Polly. I'll see what the sheriff has to say about the famous Jesse James. A week ago, you were complaining you couldn't possibly pay. Now you walk in here with $9,000. Well, it's good money, ain't it? Can't deny that, Prager. The numbers aren't on the list. They must have changed the money somewhere. As usual. Pretty smart, eh? All right, make out the deed. And what do you want? You walk in here with your pockets full of money, too? Oh, is this the bank that was robbed? Any child knows that. I've gotten most of the money back now. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Crager, but how did you manage to do it? He's the sixth farmer that's come in here and bought up his farm with money that Jesse James stole. Oh, that's marvelous. Hmm. Oh, can you prove it, or do I use the word alleged? Of course I can't prove it. Oh, but Jesse James really is a Robin Hood, isn't he? He steals from you so these poor farmers can buy the land that you're trying to steal from them. What do you mean, steal? Oh, I beg your pardon. I mean that allegedly you're trying to steal. Who are you? Oh, Miss Polly Morgan, star reporter of the St. Louis Journal. Of course, it doesn't say star on the card, but I think it's best to be modest, don't you? <laughs> Mr. Jesse James, we're heading for the sheriff's office. And don't make me put another notch in my gun. I've too many there already. Well, come on. Come on, boys. I want to see the sheriff's face when Byrne turns up again. Much obliged, Bert. I uh, don't suppose Jesse James will last very long with you around, Sheriff. Well. I aim to do my duty, as I see it. Straight from St. Louis. There ain't but one more like it in the country. And where's the other one? Looks like the sort of gun Jesse James ought to carry. Oh, you again. Well, young lady, I suppose you think you've captured Jesse James. I most certainly have, and he was as big as life. Isn't there any law and order in this town? <laughs> Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Don't talk to the sheriff that way. We want to get a story out of him. Oh, he's just mad because he didn't capture Jesse himself. Listen, young lady, I have known Jesse James since before he was born. But you have? Is he really a Robin Hood <laughs> or a ruthless outlaw and killer? Of course he ain't. Why, he wouldn't hurt a fly unless it was working for the railroad. But this ain't him. It ain't? Of course it ain't. But look, it... I know it looks like him, but it ain't. Can I go now? Yeah, get out. And good riddance to you. I'll bet you could give us a lot of human interest items about Jesse James. Oh, we'll quote you directly, Mr. Sheriff. Your name will be in all the papers. Well, I could tell you about the time Jesse helped me build my fireplace. You mean we could really see that fireplace? Well, I couldn't leave here till evening. Oh, well, that's all right. We could come to dinner. Well, you see... Oh, you mean you're a bachelor. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Strictly by choice, you understand. Oh, why, of course. A handsome man like you. <laughs> but don't you worry about a thing. We'll come and bring the food and we'll cook it. We'll see that our readers get the true story of Jesse James and Sheriff Whitaker. Jesse was only 15 when we built this here fireplace, but he carried them boulders just like they was pebbles. You seem to have been a very good friend of his. 
You weren't ever a member of his gang, were you? Well, at least I wasn't sheriff sure then. Hey, they made bad-looking vittles for a couple of city gals to cook up. But tell me, how did he happen to come back here, Sheriff? Did I ever tell you how I learned Jesse James how to shoot? Well, sir, it was... All right, Stone, get going. Right, Clint. Ruth, Chuck, come on. Look around, boys. He must have some money hid around here someplace. Ah, oh, what's your hurry? Let's tie into some of this grub for him. Look at that big galoot. You can't eat my fried chicken. It's not for the likes of you. Ah, oh, go on away. You better get out of here. We're going to burn this place. Well, you can't leave him here. about this, I'll give you the whole story later. But right now, I don't want anyone to know I was here. But we can't do that, Jane. What would our editor say if we held a story just because a bandit asked us to? Well, if the editor doesn't know, won't hurt him. We'll hold it until you give us the word. Thanks. He'll be all right. It'll take more than a little roasting to finish Gabby Whitaker. tonight.
this Jesse James is a mad dog. And we demand a lot more action from you than we've been getting. My boy Sam's about dead, with a bullet in his chest. What do you got to say, Charlie? I don't know. I ain't denying Jesse gave me the money to buy my place with, and now, well, I just can't understand it. That U.S. Marshal in Altoona doesn't know the country, but you do. It's up to you to get Jesse or turn in your badge. I've been out all night with a posse. Maybe you think I've been chasing after butterflies, huh? That isn't what I mean. You and Jesse used to be very close. Now, if you were to lead him to believe you still feel kindly toward him, you might... Are you suggesting that I sneak up on Jesse James with a peace pipe in one hand and a six-gun in the other? Well, I don't do business that way, Mr. Sloan. I ain't denying the people of this county deserve protection. And if you folks will just leave me be, I'll do my best to see if they get it. I believe you, Sheriff. I just don't understand it, that's all. I didn't know they had such elegant music in Hillman. Want to get a sarsaparilla and listen? We were supposed to get a local color story. Well, this is local color, isn't it? Oh, come on. Oh. something better to do than play poker. And with a lot of farmers waiting for you to appeal their case, Mr. Sloan, I'd think you'd be studying law instead of cards. Well, if you don't stop, Jesse, it won't make any difference whether I successfully appeal the case or not. None of my clients will live to get the benefit of it. You needn't worry none about Jesse James. He's going to get his come up run no later than tonight. Ah, uh, we've heard that talk before, and Jesse James still riding high, wide, and handsome. He may be handsome, but he ain't riding by a cracky. Steve tells me he's down with a bullet in his brisket. You sure about that? Sure. Sure, I'm sure. He's laying in an old deserted house down the Long Valley. Most of his gang's walked out on him. Uh, cash me in. I, I gotta get going. I'm heading for Al Tooney right now to pick up that United States Marshal and his posse. So if you want to see Jesse James in the flesh, Come over to the jail tomorrow and take a look. And we thought he was Jesse's friend. Do you suppose he still thinks that it was Jesse who burned his house down? Well, we've got to tell him. Oh, Mr. Sheriff! Oh, it's no use. Well, we've got to warn Jesse. But we don't even know where Long Valley is. We'll find that out at the livery stable. No, I can't grant an extension. You wouldn't find it any easier to pay up in 90 days. And you must have learned that Jesse James isn't going to help you. I'll expect you to be off that farm one week from today. Jesse James has been shot. Are you sure? I just heard the sheriff bragging about it. He's on his way to Altoona right now to pick up the marshal. How many men has Jesse James got with him? The sheriff claims most of his gang has left him. He's hiding out in a deserted shack up in Long Valley. And with that fool sheriff shooting off his mouth, half the town will know about it by now. Some friend of Jesse's will probably warn him. We can't afford to let him get away. Get going. Look here, Craigers. If I kill Jesse James, I'm out of a job. You won't need a job with that 10,000 in your jeans. How do I know I can collect it? Now, don't worry. I've got enough influence to see to that.
gosh. I wish you'd picked a more cheerful place. Oh, not that haunted houses bother me any. Oh! oh. Surround the house so James can't get away. Look as if he's even been here. Well, you can't blame him. You couldn't keep me here dead, much less wounded. Oh, Mr. James, don't you even limp? Huh? Where's... I don't know how that story ever got started. Nobody's ever managed to put a bullet through Jesse James yet. Well, then why are you here? It's just as good a hideout as any. What are you two doing here? Oh, we came to warn you. Uh, the sheriff's bringing a posse to capture you, and they're due here any time. Yeah? I reckon I can take care of anything that fool sheriff has to offer. Let's take a look around. I'm with you, Jesse. That's Burns' gang. It's time Gabby and the Marshal were getting here. Wonder what that buckboard's doing down there. Maybe Burns figures to carry you back in it, so as to be sure of collecting that reward. We're on time. Yonder's the James gang. Fool, I wanted to sneak up on him. Cut her out and take cover. and help the posse. I've never helped the posse before. I don't hardly know how to act. <laughs> You ruined everything. Shh. Thanks. Let's get out of here. Did you get Jesse? Yeah, come on. It wasn't Burns, it was Jesse. How can you be sure it was Jesse? Well, I don't know. I, I can just tell, that's all. Say, you're not falling for that Jesse James, are you? Maybe Jesse's still in the house.
Yep. That's Jesse James, all right. But that... After all the gunfights he's been in, you never expect a stray bullet to get him. Is Krager up yet? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Burns. Did you get him? Sure. But that fool posse showed up too soon, and I can't risk trying to claim the reward. Why not? They mistook us for Jesse's gang, and I had to shoot a couple of them to get away. That's too bad. Still, Jesse's dead. That's the main thing. Maybe it is to you, Krager, but I'm out that $10,000. Yes, and Hillman isn't a very healthy place for you now. One of Jesse's old gang is apt to spot you anytime. Better take this and clear out. I reckon not. Now that Jesse's dead, his gang will bust up. Anyway, I like it here. All right. I'll double it. You seem to be very anxious for me to leave, Krager. I just want you to have enough to make a fresh start somewhere else. No. I'm having a streak of luck down at the Double Eagle, and I don't like changing it. See you later. Anytime you have a little more work for me to do, let me know. cheerful for a ghost, Jesse. Now that you've got your big story about me getting killed, I suppose you'll be heading back to St. Louis. Well, I'm afraid I haven't any excuse to stay, have I? Well, would another story do? Only this one's about a man named Krager. Is that why you're posing as Clint Burns? Mm-hmm. Krager's smart, all right, but he must have made a slip somewhere in his scheme. I'm going to find out where. But if Krager should find out you're not really Burns... That's just what he will be finding out if I don't get back to the Double Eagle. Clint Burns is supposed to be having a run of luck. See you later, Frank. Bye. Hello, Sloan. Hello. Is this what you wanted to see me about? Yes and no. Now that Jesse's out of the way, Clint Burns is beginning to present a problem. I have an idea he's getting too big for his britches. What's the matter? Won't he leave? No, he won't take what I offered him. And when a man like Burns gets the idea that we're afraid of what he knows... So? Burns is a gambler. Maybe he's a crooked gambler. Now, no one think twice about the death of a crooked gambler. Who's elected for the job? He should be somebody respectable. A man they'll believe when he accuses Burns of cheating. A man like that might be hard to find. Not with you here, Sloan. Me? Why not? You've killed your man before. And it means just as much to you as it does to me to get rid of Burns. But, uh... I'll tell you what I have in mind. Got room for another? Hello, Mr. Sloan. We don't see you in here very often. No, but when we do, we usually win. Three sixes. 
Paul Blue. I didn't know a man's luck could be as bad as this, if it is just luck. Mean anything but that saloon? Meaning that if it's just luck, it's bound to turn. I'll wait a while and see. I'm all in. Run them. Kings and queens. Ten full. That last one came from the bottom, Burns. <laughs> Burns never saw the day he could make a draw like that. Yeah, he never saw the day he'd let a man go when he had him dead to rights, the way he just had Sloan. Everybody stay where you are. Don't make a move. Now then, where's your body? A man couldn't speed up his draw like that all of a sudden. You don't suppose... I've been thinking the same thing. There's never been but one man in this country could draw that fast. Yeah, and maybe he ain't dead. That's right. Burn, you stay here and keep your eye on him. Ruff and I are going to see Crager. You aim to come along, Sheriff? Who, oh, eh? You think I'd miss a thing like this? I never expected a call from you, Mr. Burns. The name's James, Jesse James. Jesse James? What kind of a joke is this? It ain't no joke. It's plumb serious. Then you're not dead? You're giving yourself up? Is that what this means? <laughs> no, I'm not dead. And I'm not giving myself up. You see, Judge, I might tell you I'm Jesse James, but I reckon you'd have a hard time proving it. That's a mighty neat point. You should have been a lawyer, Jesse. But I don't reckon you'd risk coming here just to put me in a hole. Say, Judge. What happens when a lawyer gets paid by the side he's supposed to be fighting against? I never expected Jesse James to be interested in a point of law. But to answer your question, that would be collusion. And ordinarily would invalidate the decision. Why? Well, we've added things up. And the answer is that Sloan's in with Krager. Sloan? You mean Paul Sloan? We mean exactly that. Why, Sloan tried to kill Jesse here. Who'd be one of them killed but Krager? You see, Krager thinks I'm Clint Burns. He made it very clear that he wanted to get rid of me. But have you any proof of this? Don't need no proof. I'm the sheriff, ain't I? And I'm on my way to grab that Sloan critter right now. You may not need proof just to arrest a man, but reversing a decision is another matter. Sheriff, I'm going along with you. Looks like Burns' old gang is getting curious. I reckon I better lead him back to the Double Eagle while you go on. Worth the ride out there anyway. Darn tootin' it is. You can't get away from us, Sheriff. We heard about the shooting. Ain't you two going back to St. Louis yet? Are you going to arrest Sloan? I tried to, but he wasn't home. I reckon he heard I was coming. Oh, you're going to keep after him, aren't you? You ain't going to pry no information out of me, young woman. There's something up. Well, what are we waiting for? I guess it means another ride in that buckboard. But this time, I'll do the driving. Like Ruth Boulder and that Greg fella. Wonder what they're doing here. I don't know. I was figuring I'm barging right in, but now I reckon the situation calls for a little detectivating. What's this fool story you're trying to tell me? That it couldn't be Jesse James. 
Must have been Clint Burns that got killed up there. Once we got suspicious, I took a good look at that fellow. I knew for sure it wasn't Clint. No ordinary shot could have outshot me that way. I might have known it was Jesse James. There's a couple of fellas peeking in the window. Looks like the sheriff. Who was with him? Appeared mighty like Judge Rutherford. Of course, I couldn't be sure in the dark. Rutherford? You wait here, Mose. Uh, yes, sir. Come here, Boulder. I want you to help me with this. You better take a look at this, too, Greg. I want to be sure I have the facts right. I've heard all the evidence of collusion I need. I wonder what all that writing's about. No telling what Quaker's up to. You come with me. Greg, you and Sloan take the Sand Hill Road. That way we'll cut them off. Oh, they'll catch up with them, sure. We've got to get Jesse. Hang on. Not so bad, I can't fight. and the judge and started shooting at them. Well, they got away, but I'm afraid they... Where were they going? To Long Valley. You're not following anybody, mister. Who says I ain't? for a year. Yes, and we can't even get a chance to rush them. Somebody will have to climb that rock above them. It's our only chance. Boulder, come here. Think you can climb that rock? Sure. But I'll have to go around and come up from behind. Then hurry. Still all right, Gidge? Never felt better in my life.
Krieger, what are you afraid of? Ha, I'd like to see him do it. We're winning this fight hands down. <laughs> Jesse Jane. Come on, let's get out of here. Play fast and loose with me, eh? You're under arrest. We want the full details, Sheriff. Give me my book, Jane. You're not going. Well, I don't want to outstay my welcome with the judge here. You mean you're leaving for good? Well, I have a little place back in Nebraska that... Uh... Kind of needs tending to. What are the charges, Sheriff? Mayhem, assault with intent to kill, conspiracy with intent to defraud, and collusion by cracky. Here's all my notes. Maybe they'll help you in writing up the story. Assault, conspiracy, and collusion by cracky. Help me write it? Well, where... Where are you going? To a little place back in Nebraska that kind of needs tending to. Bye, Gabby. You mean you're going away with Jesse James? I reckon you're a little mixed up, Polly. Jesse James is dead. <laughs> paper here, full text of President Grant's message to Congress. How off the press, folks, all about Jesse James. Hey, read all about Jesse. Yes, son, give me one of those. Sir. Me too. Yes, lady. Here, boy. I'll take one of those. Right down here, son. Hey, Bob, I don't see nothing in here about Jesse James. Keep looking, mister, on page four. Now, this must be it. In the middle of column three, Jesse James leads Grant. According to statistics, five male babies born in St. Joseph, Missouri during the past month have been christened Jesse James. During the same period, three have been christened Ulysses Grant. Glorifying an outlaw. 
naming babies after him. It's an outrage. Yep, maybe so. But some folks is disposed to Jesse. Claim as how him and his kin folks got a rough deal after the war. And you think that excuses him for robbing banks? Nope, maybe not. But some folks don't figure he needs any excuse, especially when it comes to robbing some of these land grabbers that have come in here since the war getting rich off of other folks' misfortunes. I'll have you understand, sir, that banks are the very foundation of modern progress. If you run a bank, I reckon that's fine and dandy. But I still claim we was getting along first rate out here without so much such like progress. How about it, old timer? You look like you've been around here long enough to hold an opinion. Well, now I can't say about Missouri. This first time I've been back here in nine out of 15 years. Wouldn't be here now if it wasn't my granddaughter. She argued fight me into settling out from California digging. A digging? Do you mean a gold mine? Yep. Platter. her. That was the first nugget took out of her. She weighs just a little mite shy of nineteen dollars and six bits. <laughs> well, a mine that size must have brought you a good price. Well, I ain't complaining. Now, right in that bag, girls. Uh... I'm afraid folks out here have an exaggerated idea about California gold mines. All the nuggets aren't as big as that one. So I thought Grandpa should sell before the mine ran out and come back to Missouri. Owning land that grows something is a lot more permanent. Here she comes, boys. Hurry up. You're exactly right, miss. There's nothing like a good Missouri farm for security, and I happen to know a big piece of acreage right outside of Munis that can be bought cheap. Here's my card. I'd like to be of assistance. Thank you, Mr. Wyatt. My name's Mary Whittaker. What happened? This is a holdup, folks. Help! Don't worry, madam. Jesse James never hurts anybody that listens to orders. Reach higher and try and touch that genuine mahogany trim. He means you too, Grandpa. Reach. If it wasn't for the presence of this young lady, I'd I know, go. I know. You'd show us how brave you are. Well, there are three more of us outside. I suppose you'd like to take care of them after mopping up on Frank and me. Never mind this. I'll take care of that. Keep them covered, Frank. Jesse, and let me shoot the car. No, no, please don't. Don't worry, lady. Leave him be. He's the only critter on this train with an ounce of spunk. Where are you from, Grandpa? California gold diggings? Yeah. How'd you do out there? I done all right. About time, too. That is 15 years. Hmm? Well... Then you won't miss that watch and chain. Just drop it right in here. That's a good boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And you, sir? Wyatt Brothers Bank, Samuel Wyatt, President. Much obliged, Mr. Wyatt. Maybe someday we'll do business together. Much obliged, folks. You can relax now. No, no, no! Good work, old timer. I guess Jesse James ain't so smart after all. How much you got there, mister? Oh, about $40,000. Here you are, miss. Thank you. Next time your grandfather might not be so lucky. He should put his money in the bank and carry cash his checks. That's what I tried to tell him. Let me tell you something, mister. I don't spend no 15 years finding a gold mine and then trusting some stranger with what I get for it. And I don't want no argufying about it, another.
What's the exact amount, Bob? There's $41,280. Is that what you made it? Yep, counting that what Mary paid for the house and furnishings this morning. There you are, Mr. Whitaker. Now, this book tells you exactly how much you have on deposit. Thank you, Mr. White. You've been very kind. Thank you. Tomorrow, we'll drop out and see that farmland I was telling you about. In the meantime, your money is in safe hands. A big load off my mind. Don't you feel better, too? I suppose so, but I don't feel like a rich man no more. Is that Tom? Boys, you shouldn't take these chances. We was heading by here anyhow and stopped by to leave a couple letters. That's better than trusting the mail. This is for you, and this one's for old man Horner. Inside's a little donation from the railroad company. Kind of makes up for the way they cheated him out of that right of way. It ain't any more than right and just, Mom. Horner gave most of his light to clearing that land. Where's Dr. Samuels? He's out on a sick call. And Buster, where's he? He's been in bed long ago. I'd waken him, only, well, you know how his father feels about... Jesse, is that you? You bet, Buster. Glad to see me. Gee whizzes. Hello, Frank. Hello, Buster. Why don't you come to see us more often? Well, you see, we've been kind of busy. How are you getting along in school? Well, all right, I guess. I'm up to long division. Do you like your teacher? Mm-hmm. And the other kids, they treat you all right? Gee whizzes. And you know, Jesse, when we play fox and hounds, they always let me be the fox. And most of the time, they can't catch me. Why does that make them say I'm a lot like you? Well, um... I don't know. I haven't any idea. I guess you better go back to bed, Buster. Good night, now. Good night, Jesse. Good night, Frank. Good night, Buster. I guess the doc's right about him not saying too much of Frank and me. We gotta go now, Mom. <laughs> Mr. Wyatt, you sure enough had me fooled. I thought that... Sounds like it come from the bank. Declare war on James Brothers. Offer a huge reward. Captain Worthington, head of railroad police, on way to Missouri. Attracted by an offer of a $50,000 reward, Captain Worthington left Chicago for the scene of last night's bank robbery. If you hurry, you can get to minutes in time to confer with him, Roy. I don't expect that a big gun like Worthington will pay much attention to a peace officer like me. And that's all right. But we can't afford to work at cross purposes with the railroads. So you'd better get together with Worthington somehow. All right, if that's orders. Not orders exactly, Roy. It's in the form of a suggestion. Our principal interest right now is in having that bank in Munis open its doors again. The only thing is, I can't figure out how Jesse hops around fast enough to do all the things they say he does. Missouri one day and Minnesota the next. Yes. I've been thinking of that, too. Well, anyway. Here are your instructions in writing. Stand back there. You want to see Sam Wyatt? Tell him to come out. We got a right to know about our money. Just a moment, please. I have some encouraging news for you. Oh, Captain. This is Captain Worthington, head of the Railroad Detective Service. He's going to take charge of everything. But what about our money? That's why Captain Worthington's here. He's going to get it back for you. We're not looking to him for it, Sam. We're looking to you. Well, I'd make good your losses if I could, but I'm broke, too. Every cent that Bob and I had was in that vault. I can't help that. I want my money. Come on. 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 Come
have it back. You better go back inside, Sam. Yes. Now listen to me, folks. You all my friends. I know how you feel. And I don't blame you. But as long as I'm sheriff of this county, I am to see that justice is done to each and every one of you. If it's a fact that the bank has been cleaned out, you ain't going to gain anything by messing things up. So the best thing you can do is to go back home and let Captain Worthington here get started after Jesse James. Hi there, Roy. Hi, Sheriff. What brought you up in this neck of the woods? I thought you had enough horse thieves in your part of the country to keep you busy all summer. Hung the last one a week ago, so I quit the stock raisers and hired out to the Bankers Association. They told me when I got down here to get in touch with you, Captain Worthington. Named Rogers. Why'd they want you to see me? Well, they thought maybe we could cooperate. But this is all they gave me in the way of instructions. Call on Jesse James. Do you know where to find him? Well, I hadn't given much thought to that. Just started looking, I guess. Would you know if you saw him? <laughs> Not without an introduction. Hmm. Neither did anybody else in this part of the state, except maybe his ma, over in the next county, and his stepdaddy, old Doc Samuels. See you right after lunch in about an hour. Come on, Finn. I have an idea that fellow's a lot smarter than he pretends to be. For instance, the sheriff's remark about a horse thieves. We better team up with him then. That way we can clean up our business quicker. Our only job is getting that $50,000 reward, and that's worth waiting for. What if James does commit a few more crimes before we catch up with him? That may cause him to raise the ante. And we don't want to split with someone who calls himself Rogers. But how are we going to shake loose from him? We won't. We'll pretend to cooperate with him until we find out what he's up to, and then we'll cut in ahead of him. So it looks like the only clue we've got to go on is one of the robbers is wounded. Yep. That's what Hamlin the teller claimed. He's sure he hit one of them, said he saw him grab the horn to keep himself in the saddle. How about uh, stepping over to the house with me and having a snack? I'm much obliged, Sheriff, but I just took on a late breakfast. So I guess I'll look around some while I'm waiting for Worthington. Maybe right out in the direction the robbers went. Can never tell what a feller's liable to stumble on to. That's right. Good afternoon, ma'am. But where did you come from? Well, I saw you putting up that sign, so oh, I... You want to see the house? We'll come right on in. Thanks a lot, ma'am. My name's Mary Whitaker. Pleased to meet you, Miss Whitaker. Well, this is it, Mr... Rogers. How many in your family, Mr. Rogers? Only one, counting myself, uh, up to the present. Oh, in that case, I mean, if you're intending to get married, well... Wouldn't you want her to see it, too, before you made up your mind? Oh, I guess whatever would suit you, it suits her all right. Is that organ in good condition? Yes, sir. Has a lot of brand new stops you probably never saw before. I like to ride through the Echo Mountain. The Echo makes my dream come true. I say I love you, it says I love you, and I imagine I ride with you. I like to roam through the Echo Mountain, it makes me feel that you are near. I say I miss you, it says I miss you. And I keep thinking it's you I hear. You who, where can you be? You who, you answer me. I long for you, dear, from early morning until the stars begin to shine. So I'll keep riding through Echo Mountain until the moment 
Getting my belongings back, that's what. I was willing to forget about my watch and chain, but when some ornery rascalian figures on skinning me out of $40,000, right there's where I start getting mad. Please, Grandpa, there's no sense to getting yourself all excited. Excited? Who's excited? That Jesse James has overreached himself, that's what. And if I ever lay hands on him, I'll... Who's your friend, Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Rogers, this is my grandfather. Mr. Rogers just dropped in to look at the house. You see, we had all our money in the bank Jesse James robbed. That's why Grandpa's so excited. Well, I tell you, he ain't excited. I'm mad. And there's a heap of difference. You lost your money? Is that why you had to rent your home? Yes. We just bought it in the furniture, too. We expected to settle down here and buy farming property. And then... I let him argue find me into putting my money in the bank. Let me tell you something, young fella. Never have nothing to do with no banks. If you got any money to protect yourself, a good dog. Like Whiskers here. Be a whole lot safer with him. Please, must we go into all that again? I suppose it's my fault, mostly. Grandpa never had any use for banks, but after we got caught in that train holdup and Jesse James almost got our money. Almost nothing. Whiskers here scared him off quick. Made a grab for his nose, got his mask instead. Pulled it clean off his face. Wait a minute. You trying to tell me you were on the train that Jesse James robbed? You're darn tootin'. And that dog there unmasked him? Yes, sir. -y. You must know what he looks like. Well, maybe not for sure, but Mary here would. Looked him square in the eye. Is that a fact, miss? Would you know him if you saw him again? Well, I suppose so. Well, come along with me. You too, Grandpa. But what about the house? Don't you want to see the kitchen? Oh, I'm sorry about that, miss, but oh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even looking for a place to rent. You're not? No, ma'am. But I thought you said... Aren't you going to get married, either? No, ma'am. Anyway, not that I know of. The marrying idea was yours. Oh, you... Now, listen, miss. I've got an appointment to keep, and you've got to go along to identify Jesse James. I'm what? Are you crazy? No, ma'am. I'm a peace officer. You come along. I might need you, too. If what I've got in mind works out, you won't need to rent your house. Not that I claim to be any great chucks as a detective, Captain Worthington, but it seems common sense if one of the James boys was wounded. He'd be looking up a doctor sooner or later. That sounds reasonable. And the likeliest doctor for him to think about will be his own stepfather. Well, possibly. Anyway, it wouldn't do us any harm to ride out that way and find out. Especially now that Miss Whitaker would know Jesse if she saw him anywhere. Sounds like a wild goose chase to me. But of course, if you insist, Miss Whitaker. Insist? I don't even know what he's talking about. I suppose our next move would be to walk up to the house and say we'd like to rent it. Maybe they'd have Jesse show us through the place. Good evening. Are you the doctor? Yes, ma'am. Well, my grandfather's just come down with cramps or something. That's our campfire over there. I'll be with you as soon as I get my medicine kit. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Good night, Buster. Good night, Pop. Good night, dear. I try not to be long, but don't wait for me. Everything's all clear. Samuels is down at the camp with Rogers. All right, let's go. They say these James boys shoot fast and straight. If they're in that house, I'll pick us off before we get them located. I'll locate them before they locate us. Ever see one of these? No, what is it? One of those new naphtha torches. All I do is light the fuse and let it burn down about there. And I throw it in a window just in time to light up the whole place. We rush in, have everybody covered before they know what it's all about. Supposed to explode, I... 
plug was. I got nabbed to torch. I threw it in and light up the place. And I thought, oh, let go of me. I tell you, it was an accident. Well, so was this. Martha. Martha. Buster. Buster. Take it easy, Martha. Uh, Buster. Take it easy. He's burnt some, but he'll be all right. Nebraska. That's the man, Sand Valley, Nebraska. What do you know about him? As far as I know, Thompson's a hard-working, law-abiding citizen. He had a brother, though, called Bud. They had to send him to Leavenworth for trying to rob a post office. Is he still in Leavenworth? As I recollect, his sentence has three, four more years to run. Why? What do you make out of this? I found that in the burning house last night. Gosh almighty, Roy, you've got Jesse James' post office address. I see a postcard for you here, somewhere. Uh, from down to Leavenworth. And your brother Bud said he was getting along as well as could be expected. That and... Oh, here it is. Uh, he says... Uh, oh. Uh, here's your newspaper, too. Much obliged. I'll raise you all I got. Drag 10, Cole. I'm that much shy. Wait a minute. Maybe you'll let this make up the difference. All right. Trees full on sevens. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Hi, Jesse. Here you going, Frank. See what's new, Jesse? Come on, Frank, we got work to do. Why? What's the matter, Jesse? A bank detective started a raid the other night. Mom and Buster have been hurt. The sheriff. Sheriff's out of town. Well, maybe you can tell me what I want to know. Where can I find that detective Roy Rogers? He's out of town, too. Left to my head of the sheriff. Happen to know where they went? No, nope, they didn't say. Sheriff, neither. Hunting Jesse James, I guess. Much obliged. You're welcome. Got him. <laughs> Say, you parcel that Worthington outfit? No, why? Well, he's been pesting me with the same brand of questions. He's afraid that Rogers will beat him to the $50,000 reward. Shoot. Who are those fellas anyway? Clear out. What do you want? Does a fellow going by the name of McDaniels live here? Maybe. Why do you want to know? Well, me and his brother was acquainted some, and he told me to look him up. Bud? I guess you're wondering where I got acquainted with him. Leavenworth? Yeah. Most folks don't put much store in ex-convicts, and that's why I thought maybe if I looked up Bud's brother, that I... What he's trying to say is we ain't been eating regular. All right, come in. 
I hope you don't think we've been hinting for a free meal for you. Shut that door. Light and eat. I'm Thompson McDaniels. You know Bud, too? Why, uh... No, he did his time before Bud got there. Then me and him teamed up after I got out. I reckon they're all right if one of them knows Bud. Yeah, if he does know Bud. Grub's on, Cole. Do you happen to be the Cole Younger I've heard Bud talk so much about? I'm Cole Younger, but I don't know whether you heard Bud talking about me or not. It could have been you seen my picture on reward notices. That's the way you fellas feel about us. Maybe we'd better be going. Sit down and finish your grub. Here, chew on this. What are you gawking at, Thompson? Looks like we're gonna have more visitors. Was any more of Bud's friends gonna follow you here? No, who is it? Get back. Jim, you and Bob get in the back room and take your vittles with you. You too. Might as well have you where we can keep an eye on you. Come on, pick up that plate and cup and get. them two horses outside. They're a couple of strays. I found them down the road a piece, fetched them in and tied them up. It ain't natural for horses to stray by them saddle like that. Besides, you're lying. We're peace officers. And when we leave here, we aim to take a couple of prisoners along with us. Where are you hiding? I ain't hiding nobody. And I found them horses just like I said. Then you can't have any objection to us looking around some. This is my home. And you haven't any legal rights snooping around without a search warrant. This is all the search warrant I need. Now I'll see what's the other side of that door. You fellows don't want to get mixed up in this. Stay back. Much obliged, Mr. McDaniels. I guess we'll be drifting. Hold on, young fella. I want to talk to you two. Where'd you get the money to buy them horses? Where you supposed? Where is it? Where's it to you anyhow? They were bought with stolen greenbacks. Hold out your hand. Drop them guns. Which one will I drill first, son? Either one, I guess. Why not? You hear them say they were peace officers, didn't you? That doesn't make any difference. Mr. McDaniels took us in unsuspecting. And being a law-abiding citizen, we don't want to have him mixed up in any murder. I'll get started. Better take these with you. You might need them sometime. I hope it works. I can't get out of here before I lose my self-control. I'll give you an idea what's going to happen to you the next time we meet you. I'm sorry about this. If I hadn't thought we'd shake them off for trails, we'd never come near here. Well, this ain't no time for excusing yourself. Well, we've got to get saddled and skin out of here before they come back to the posse. Sir, gentlemen. Are you the Captain Worthington? I presume so. At least I know of no namesake. Is there a Miss Whittaker stopping here? Yes, sir. Room two upstairs. Oh, here's Miss Whittaker. Oh, hello. This is very fortunate. It's extremely important that I get in touch with your grandfather, Mr. Rogers, at once. I'm sorry. I can't help you. I don't know where they are. Please, how can I help you get your money back if you don't tell me? Uh... It isn't money I'm worrying about. They left me here almost a week ago, and I haven't seen them since. Where did they go? I don't know, except they thought they might find Jesse James. I felt sure I'd see them in a day or two, but... He wants us to drift in the Sand Valley tomorrow. Him and Frank will be there ahead of us. We're taking big chances going back there as soon as this. 
That's what I tried to tell Jesse, but he's so mad on account of Buster and he's more that he don't care. What he wants to do is smoke this bank detective out in the open. Figures the best way to do that is draw some money out of the Sand Valley Bank. Cooks that fellow up into this neck of the woods. What does he want him up here for? Well, you're supposed to pay him off for starting that raid on his stepfather's house. Shucks, he didn't have nothing to do with starting that raid. All he done was... How do you know he didn't? What that feller told us doesn't prove anything. What feller? The fellow that sold us those two horses we were riding. What'd he tell you? Well, he claimed the investigation proved that that bank detective didn't have a thing to do with starting that raid. Well, who did then? Well, near as I can figure out, is one of the fellows hooked up at the railroad. You counting on me to help you with that raid, Cole? Maybe so. Why? It's going to look suspicious if we don't start drifting into town kind of gradual, and I thought maybe me and one or two of the other boys could start moseying in tonight. Yeah. Well, in the morning it'll be soon enough. You and your partner better bunk alongside me and McDaniels tonight. And that way the four of us can get up together for a bright and early start. Come along and fetch your blankets. Good morning, Miss Whitaker. Any news of your grandfather? No, not yet. Well, it's possible that he and Roger succeeded in catching up with James, and James became suspicious. And then the wrong party took the other in custody. You must have some idea where they expected to find him. Well, they thought he was hiding out somewhere in the vicinity, so they left me here while they went to investigate. That's all I can tell you. If Roger suspected that James was being around here, he had a very good reason for thinking so. I realize that now. The danger must have been greater than he wanted me to know. That's why he didn't tell me everything. He thought I might get frightened and... You're putting on a great act, young lady, but you haven't fooled me a bit. Please, not so loud. Whether you know it or not, I can take measures to make you tell the truth. All your make-believe anxiety doesn't mean a thing to me, so you might as well start talking right... Excuse me, stranger, but where I come from, men don't talk to their women folks such like. Thank you kindly, but I think I'll be able to take care of myself. His bark is much worse than his bite. Beg your pardon, ma'am. <coughs> Having met your bodyguard before, I might have known my help wouldn't be needed. Who is this man? Do you know him? Just an acquaintance I met on the train. Thank you, ma'am. Well, possibly I did lose my temper, and possibly you were telling the truth. But in that case, your grandfather is unquestionably being detained by Jesse James. I don't think so, necessarily. What would you do, Captain, if you saw Jesse James? There's only one thing to do. Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. But now about your grandfather and Rogers. I think they'll probably be able to take care of themselves also. Right ahead and keep an eye on them two jailbirds. I don't trust them too much. Shad's following us. We better split up while I figure a way to warn the marshal. Where can I find the marshal? In his office, likely. Just around the corner, after the pump, on the right side of the street. Thank you. What do you want the marshal for? Jesse James is in town. I think there's going to be a robbery. Looks like you're going to have to buck me off, Trigger.
Are you all right? I'm all right. I did it on purpose. I had to talk to you. You've got to get to the bank and tell them to look out for a holdup. your money. Go after him. That's fifty thousand dollars getting away from us. Let's ride to the river. We're going over the ridge. Hey! You got an arm of your own to look out for. Ah, uh, shucks. Mine is a clean wound. Let them work there. Patched it up slick. Come on in, boys. Zerelda. Zerelda, where are you? Zerelda. Zerelda. Darling, what's happened? I took sick about three days ago. Then the baby started ailing. Oh! It's nothing. It's just a scratch. Jesse, you have... No, no. The thing we've got to think about is getting you and the young and well. Maybe the fellow that fixed up my hand. He doesn't set himself up to be a doctor, but he sure did a good job for me. When I was a kid, there wasn't any docking calling distance, and Mom had to get by the best way she could. That wasn't so bad, was it? It's all right. It was good. Must be hard on women folks when they're men get in serious trouble, especially when they're sick. Yeah, I guess it is.
You've just about got us all cured up, Leavenworth. Yep. Guess you'll be skinned out pretty soon, huh? Maybe you and Frank will be going along with me. Jesse and me have been talking it over. We think keeping company with us is taking too much of a risk. Likewise, we figured that maybe you'd like to settle back east somewhere, learn the doctrine trade from the ground up. You got a knack for it. And we're figuring on staking you as much as we're able. See how much we got saved up, Jesse. What is this, a hold-up? Come over here. See how much is in it, Gabby. Shucks, you can't be over two or three thousand dollars. What'd you do with the rest of it, Jesse? You're Rogers, aren't you? Where's the rest of that money? The railway to take it that blows up people's homes. I'm working for the Bankers Association. You're under arrest for the robbery of the White Bank and the murder of its porter. If it means anything to you, I didn't have anything to do with that explosion. If it means anything to you, that's all the money there is. We didn't have anything to do with the robbery of that bank. There's a lot of robbers here and there trading on Frank's in my name. Well, maybe that'll explain how you couldn't blow the safe to pieces, gather up all the money and get away as fast as they claim you did. It almost seems like the money must have been taken before the safe was blasted. Like there were folks that belonged to the bank. Come on, Gabby, I guess we're on the wrong track. Wait a minute. Why'd you do that? Why'd you give me the chance to shoot you in the back? To prove to myself you're not the kind that would shoot an unarmed bank porter. I think I know who robbed that bank. Well, I guess we'll get going. Jesse, unless you give me a reason, I won't be back. Well, what'll I do with that? Leave it. Don't forget the baby's milk. I won't, Leavenworth. If anyone questions your authority, all you got to do is show them that badge. All right, Finn, next applicant. All right, you. Can you furnish your own horse and equipment? Yes, sir. Have you ever been a peace officer? Yes, sir. I've been deputized occasional. Do you know the purpose we're employing you for? To go hunting the James boys, ain't it? Yes, and their confederates, particularly Rogers and Whitaker. Sign the book. I told you, Captain, my grandfather had nothing to do with trying to rob that bank, nor Roy Rogers either. They tried to warn the marshal, then... I'm sorry, Miss Whitaker, but I'm very busy. Here you are. Next, Finn. Grandpa! There's a posse downstairs getting ready to go out and look for you. You can't stay I here. I don't mean to. I just dropped in to tell you to pack your duds and sneak out cautious. Roy and me will be waiting down the east road a piece. This is where we gotta leave you, Mary. You understand what you're supposed to do as soon as you get to Munis, don't you? Yes, I understand, all right. But are you sure... Now, don't start worrying about me and Roy. I got everything all figured out. The sheriff wants to see you right away, Mr. Wyatt. The sheriff? Where is he? What does he want? He's right outside. The Whitaker girl's with him. I don't know what he wants, but he says it's a matter of life and death. Show him in. But say it. Shut up. Help me put these books in there. Get that scared look off your face. Sam, do you and Bob keep yourself armed? Why, we... Uh, what difference does it make? If you don't, you'd better. Jesse James is gunning for you. Jesse James after Bob and me? Why? He's got a crazy idea that you set the officers on to blow up his stepdaddy's place. Why, that's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. That's what her grandpappy tried to tell him. 
But it wasn't any use. So he got word to her to come to me. Your grandfather? How did he know? He, uh, he heard them talking. Him and this here Rogers joined up the James gang, like Worthington claimed. But there's only make-believe. Just until they find out where they've hidden the money they took from your bank. Of course, I'll be on the lookout, but not have no notion what Jesse looks like. I thought you might need a little protection. Just in case he gets by me. Why, he wouldn't be on that train, Sam. It's coming the wrong way. Yep, number seven, right on the dot. Gets here at noon, lights out to Kansas City after a half hour for lunch. Latest St. Louis papers, folks. France plans building canal across the Isthmus of Panama. How about the press, folks? Latest news about Jesse James here. Hey, mister, I'll have one. Yes, there you are, mister. Who's next? Right over here. Yes, ma'am. Please, I'll take one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Watch and chain. Get out your wallet. Put them in that bag and close it up. Train crew is coming back. South Park and see what attention Worthington paid to that wire we faked. I hope this Henley, whoever he is, hasn't led us on a wild goose chase. Anyway, this must be the place he meant. And it's still Friday afternoon. Could that be them now? Come on, we've got to get close enough to see. Up, Sheriff. Near as I can figure. You have them bring along their pass books? Yep, I sure did. All right, folks, I think I've got just about all the money that was taken in the robbery. So if you'll get your books ready, we'll kind of check up. You really mean it? Well, mine's 800. Here's my book. This is a funny thing you've done, Rogers. It's going to mean a lot to Munis. Where's Rogers? Right here. You're under arrest. What for? Aiding and abetting Jesse James in an attempted bank robbery. The only robbery I had anything to do with was a railroad car five or six hours ago. Right here's the loot. 
I took it from Sam and Bob White. Yeah. Looks like they robbed their own bank and then tried to blame it on the Jesse James. Well, uh, did you... Have you got him in jail? Nope. The only thing I bothered about was this money. That's right, Wellington. Come on, man. We'll track down the wire. Save yourself the trouble, Captain. I got a telegraph message saying they was arrested in Kansas City as they stepped off the train. I'd like to ride through the Echo Mountain. The Echo makes my dream come true. I say I love you. It says I love you. And I imagine I ride with you. I long for you, dear, from early morning. Until the stars began to shine So I'll keep riding through Echo Mountain Until the moment you're really Mysterious bombing. It close by. Too close, Tonto. That explosion came from the state senator's building. Another public figure. Let's go. Bomb wired to clock, Kimosabe. A time bomb. Just like all the others. Senator Jorgensen. Check. Captain Amby, a pattern is formed. Every explosion occurred at 12. Each victim was a politician and an opponent of Big Dan Haggart in the race for governor. That sound like Haggart behind bombings. I investigated Big Dan and he has airtight alibis. Hmm. Now that he knows you're onto him, your life may be in danger. Nonsense. Why, only today he sent me a present. This handsome watch. One minute to 12? It's running 10 minutes slow. Down, quickly. My watch was a time bomb. This proves Haggard's guilt. Now you've got a case, Captain. Not quite. Our evidence just blew up on us. However, Big Dan could still be investigated on an unofficial basis. I understand, Captain. Tonto and I will pay Haggard a visit, but first spread the word that I'm after him. Haggard, wealthy man. Wealthy and power man, Tonto. He's trying to take over this state as his own private empire. Kimosabe, I have strange feeling we watched. We are, Tonto. You ride away and double back. I'm going straight in. Big Dan Haggart's expecting me. Mr. Haggart? It's that masked man you were expecting. Ah, the Lone Ranger. Then we'd better make our unwelcome visitor welcome. <laughs> Strange. The door opened by itself. Welcome to my home, Lone Ranger. Where are you, Haggard? Never mind. We'll soon meet. 
But in the meantime, please feel free to inspect my clocks. They're hobbies of mine. Poor workmanship, Haggard. Your timing was off. A secret passage. This may be a trap, but I've got to chance it. Steel door. Trapped. Delighted you could drop in and spend some time with us. <laughs> Looks like the sands of time are slowly running out on you. Out of my way! Kimasabi, <laughs> here! Run for it, Tonto! Spread out! That masked man and Indian must not leave here alive! Bodyguards, Haggard. You're next. I know when I'm beaten, Ranger. You've wrecked my dreams of ever being governor. But if I don't rule from the capital, nobody shall. Imusabi, he throw another lever. That's right. <laughs> I've just activated my most powerful time bomb. Look out the window, Ranger. Capitol building? Correct. Tons of explosives are wired to the Capitol clock. When the hands meet at 12 noon, boom! That's 30 seconds from now. <laughs> Too late to stop the hands of time. Maybe not. <laughs> Tonto, you did it. Well, Haggard. Time is standing still for those unsuspecting people in the Capitol building, but your time has just run out. Back already, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. I hope you enjoyed our double feature of Roy Rogers and Gabby Hayes. I always liked those two. So join us next time for another show, and if you miss one of my shows, Go to YouTube under Donald O'Malley or Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. You'll like and subscribe and you'll never miss one of my shows. So good night, folks. Stay safe and be kind to each other. We'll see you next time.